it harms the people. It undermines democracy. When competition is not about ideas, is about who has the deepest pocket, then the country cannot grow. I'm therefore this morning submitting to us that we are in a bad space in many African countries as regards the quality of the politics that we operate. And it's not lost on me that in many African countries today, politics is about life and death. And the competition is cutthroat competition and throats are actually cut. I'm not speaking figuratively. Throats are actually cut in political contest. Has it not been lost on you that in the recent past in very few African countries, do you ever hear in many African countries that a loser has picked a phone and called the winner and said, brother, we had a good competition. The people spoke. The lingua franca after every African election is won. The elections have been stolen, they have been rigged. So in Africa, elections are either stolen or rigged. They are never lost, no one. And why? The reason is very simple. It is cutthroat. It is not a competition of ideas. It is a competition for occupying a lucrative casino so that the political office, the state house, or the government house is a casino where gambling is perpetuated on a daily basis and everyone wants to be in control of that casino. So until the day that we are able, Mwalimu Nyerere saw these things, he said, the white, he said, that state house is a holy place. He said, in Kiswahili, he said it better. He said, ikulu ni mahali patakatifu. Ikulu ni mahali patakatifu, the state house is a holy place and we must never convert it into a den of thieves. And one can extend that to parliament. Parliament is a holy place, and it must not be a den of thieves. We must not build governments where we have Alibaba and 40 thieves. In fact, they are no longer 40. Since Alibaba went there, we now have Alibabas and many other thieves. Until we eliminate Alibabaism from our politics, we are going nowhere. And as I conclude, I want to submit to us that there are ways of ensuring that we eliminate commercialization from the political arena. I know that there are many things that have been done in different countries. There were times when we thought that we should limit electoral expenditure, which is a good thing. We ask people how much you spend in election. We know what it is that would be expended when you are a presidential candidate, when you are a member of parliament, when you are a councillor, but there is a sense in which Chinua Achebe was right. Chinua Achebe writing in 1958 said of a bird amongst his Igbo people that since man has learned to shoot without missing, a naked the bird has learned to fly without patching. So there is a sense in which now that we have made the laws, the politicians have also the perfected the art of ensuring that they expend beyond the prescribed expenditure without being caught. But that is a step in the right direction. The other one is sensitization of the people. The people themselves must be sensitized. I said at the outset that one of the problems in Africa is the assumption, and I want to repeat to us, perhaps we are the better lot, but there is a sense in Africa in which the politician, whether they say it or not, actually believe that we, the electorate, are a bunch of nincompoops. They believe so. Many African politicians actually hold the electorate in great contempt. They think we don't think. 
And because they have hypnotized us in countries where ethnicity has taken root, they remind us that, you know, if you elect me, then our tribe is safe. If you elect me, then it is our tribe's turn to eat. So we believe that even if he is a thief, he is our own thief. I'm saying that what we must realize, whether we are in Uganda, whether we are in Kenya or Ethiopia, what we must recognize is that going forward, when we don't have good roads, those good roads, when, when we don't have good roads, the bad roads will affect all of us. It doesn't matter which tribe you come from. When you can't get medicine in hospital, it is not because of your tribe that you'll get treated. When you don't have good schools, the schools are bad for everybody. And therefore, the time for us is to wake up. You know, I'm now beginning to see people waking up. Look at what is happening in Algeria. The Algerians are saying, telling their leader, oh, you may have been God's gift to us, but even the gods are now tired. And it's not only in Algeria that they are saying that in Sudan. They are telling the Sudan, we know that you may have been God's gift, but the gods now want you. In South Sudan, which has been at, you know, at ease for a long, has not been at ease for a long time, just this weekend the two leaders have now recognized that the matter is very spiritual. They have gone to the Vatican for a spiritual retreat. <laughs> Things are beginning to get serious. And ladies and gentlemen, Africa can be great, Africa must be great, but in order for Africa to be great, we must inject what I've called at a different setting, we must inject hygiene in our politics. And there is something to learn from every civilization. One of the things that we can learn from the Western countries, which is positive, is that to a large extent they have now made competition in their political arena a competition of ideas. So that in many Western countries, a leader sees public office as an opportunity for service. So that when there is a vote in the United Kingdom as to whether they should leave or not, and they vote to leave, the young David Cameron leaves office. Can you imagine an African president saying, I'm now resigning because I lost a vote? He'll say, I did not vote. It is the people who voted. They do it, and there is something to learn from it. Look at what is happening again in that area of Brexit. Their prime minister saying, if you approve my plan, I will leave office. Oh, Mother Africa, where are your sons and daughters who are capable of saying that, Mother Africa? We can learn from the West that is a competition of ideas. Go to countries such as the Netherlands. The prime minister rides to work. Oh, Africa. If you should see the convoy of an African minister, not a president, I'm not touching the president. The presidents are in a different world. The African minister. The African minister will never queue. Oh, he's anathemic. Oh, the African minister is a demigod. Oh, Africa. The African councillor in your rural home, when they go to churches, not even if it is not their denomination, they saunter to the front seats. And even our latter-day clergymen will invite them to share their wisdom with the people, even if we know that they are village fools.
if there is anything that we must run from Western Europe is that they have gone through enough problems and they are capable of organizing their affairs and they have demystified political leadership. We must demystify political leadership going forward. And once we do that, and I think we can do it because I can now begin to see something happening in Africa. Young Africans are beginning to ask such a question. Africans are beginning to recognize that corruption is a cancer in our body politic. They are beginning to recognize that those who want to buy their votes don't mean well for them. They are beginning to recognize that there is enough money to change their lives if the thieves are eliminated from the political arena. They are beginning to realize that commercialization of politics is a threat to democracy. They are beginning to rise up. And I think that those who have not smelled the coffee will be surprised. They will be surprised when the ground moves from under their feet. They will be surprised when Africa begins to elect individuals who can demonstrate that they have ideas because the politics of the 21st century is the politics of ideas and about competition of ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, one can go on and on in such things, but there is no wisdom in flogging a dead horse. As I said at the beginning, I claim no authority on these matters. I merely share my thoughts with you in the hope and the belief that after this, there will be an exercise in cross-fertilization and cross-pollination. I rest my case. God bless. <laughs>